some very important uh, pathology or malformations you need to remember ahead of MDCN exam. And one of it is the hypospandias and the epispandias. So when you hear the word epi and hypo, what's the difference? Epi is just opening on the surface, on the dosa surface. Look at, let me show you a picture of that. Hold on. Can you see the, the phallus, the penis? Can you see on this upper part here, on the dosum, when there's an opening on the dosum, it refers to as epispandias. So urethra opening on dosum surface of the penis is called epispandias. And urethra opening on, on, the, do, on the ventra, ventra is just beneath it. When there's urethra opening beneath it, it refers to as the uh, hypospandias. Hypospandia is believed to be more common than the epispandias. Do you understand, doctor? Hypo is more common than the epi. So please take note. Hypo is urethra opening beneath on the ventral surface, while epi is urethra opening on the dosum surface. So uh, apart from this, what MDCN expects you to know or what you are expected to know regarding this is basically the pathological features. So in the hospital, you might be asked, in the exam, you might be asked, what are the pathological features that are peculiar to all these um, malformations? So the pathological features peculiar to this malformation, we'll discuss about it. Let me just type it, pathological features. So the pathological features peculiar to this, we've discussed this before. The first thing you want to notice is when somebody is having either opening on the ventral surface or on the dosum surface, there will either be ventral opening. If it is hypospandia, there will be ventral opening. If it is epispandia, there will be dosa opening. So let's talk about hypospandia. So one of the features you see is ventra urethra opening. So where, the, where you are not supposed to have um, opening, you'll be having opening there. For example, okay, this is your phallus. Okay. And you see a opening here, beneath it here. So this is a ventral retra opening. So that's one of the features you see. Apart from that, other features you see, if somebody is having opening here, the person, there might be, there will be absence of the opening at the tips of the glands. There will be no meatus there. You understand, doctor? So very common, it's very, very common with this, uh, this thing. So there is what is called absence, absence of the meatus at the tip of the glands. Please take note. And other thing that you also notice regarding this is, uh, you notice that the penis, let me show us this picture here. Can we see the picture? Can we see this picture? Can you notice that this, this penis glands, it looks flattened. They call it, it looks like a spade. So you see what is called spade like shape of the glands or flat thin glands. It's one of the pathological features. These are things you probably be asked in the exam in MCQs. You need to remember it. So in your OSCE, you need to remember it. Sorry, not, not really OSCE, but MCQs, you need to actually remember it. You see, flat thin glands or let's say um, spade like, spade like speed like if you look like a speed then another thing is the cordy or uh you see what do i mean by cordy you see the curvatures there will be there will be the let's say let me draw the normal phallus is supposed to be just something like this right this is how the phallus is supposed to be so cordy is you see the, the 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 curvatures will be more to the ventral side it will be something like this it will be curved to the ventral side Ventral cordy, you understand? You see ventral curvatures of the of the phallus. Please, I believe everybody is hearing me, oh, doctors. Hello? Yes, sir. All right. So you see what is called. I know these are not new things to us. Uh, let's say ventral curvature of the penis, also known as the cordy. 
of D. Please let's take note of this. It's very important for us to remember. And another thing you will see that is also very appreciated is those are UD. You will see uh, when you look at the propus here, you see like a, it's more like a covering sort of a thing. You will see presence of those are UD here. Please take note, okay? So that is another features that is actually pathological features you need to remember. Those are UD. And the last major thing also associated with it is also bifid scrotum. Bifid scrotum. So somebody who is having um, hypospandia, most of them will have all these features. These are pathological features that is associated with hypospandia. Please take note, these are very, very important. And another thing you need to remember ahead of MDCN exam that they might ask you about is the classifications. I've given the classifications before, doctors. So there are different classifications of epispandias and hypospandias, depending on the localizations of the meatus. So we have the anterior path here, you can see from the pictures. We have the middle part, and we have the posterior part here. The anterior part, you can see here, we have the gland, uh, glandula, we have the subcorona. Sometimes we also have the corona and we have the dista penile here. We have the middle shafts, we have the prosima penile, we have the penoscrota and we have the scrota here. Please take note. And we also can, we can also have opening just around this uh, periana region here. So this one is referred to as the periana. Please take note. And haven't you understand the classifications? Another point you need to remember ahead of MDCN exam is their complications. And before even saying the complication, don't forget doctors, this pathology is actually associated with undescended testes. So one of the things that most of the patients might present with is undescended testes. So it's associated with undescended, both epispandia and hypospandias. They are associated with undescended testes. Let me just say nota bene. Nota bene, both are associated with undescended testes. Okay, please take note. And apart from that, the next thing you need to remember is their complications. In the exam, you might be asked about the complications. So I'm not just going to say the complications here. Now I want to hear from us doctors. What are the complications? Let us type. Type in your answer. Let me see everybody. Complication. What are the complications? that might be associated with somebody who is presented with epispandia or hypospandias. What would be their complications, doctors? Yes, very good. Infertility, yes, you are very correct, absolutely correct. So there's increased risk of infertility. Because why? Some of them, they might be having this, um, they, they, it's just like you are shooting blank. You are shooting and it's dropping before it gets here, because especially if it is periana region. You understand? So there is actually increased risk of infertility. So, complication, absolutely correct, infertility. Yes, uh, urinary issues, yes, some of them will have urinary tract infections. You're absolutely correct, doctor. You know, it's the only one doctor we have on this page right now. It's the only one doctor we are having. We have other doctors here. We have, why are other doctors quiet? All right, why are the doctors quiet? Urinary, okay, retrograde ejaculation. Yeah, possible to be retrograde ejaculation. Yeah, but that will be more of like infertility as a complication. What other thing? What about problem with copulation? So somebody who have opening, they might have issues with copulation. So let's say problem with copulation. Copulation. Yeah. Yeah, any races. Yes, you're absolutely correct, doctor. So, what we can urine? Yes, they can have what is called any races. You're absolutely correct. They can have psychological problem also. Just imagine somebody who is having opening on one region of the distance. So, psychological issues. Psychological problems. Yeah, 
etc. So these are the uh, these are the things. Some of them are actually the complications. Some of them will present with. Okay. So apart from the complication, the major thing is treatment is very important. And one thing you need to remember regarding the treatment of this is treatment is done before the age of awareness. So you want to make sure you treat this child before the child realizes, oh, I'm having this or something. So mostly it's before the age of awareness. Do you understand, doctor? So, and there are different types of surgery. Mostly most of the surgery are plastic surgery. So you want to redo reconstruction. Excuse me, reconstruction of the meatus. You can do skin cover. You can take a skin graft to cover it. Yes, yeah, somebody can. Is it can the undecided TC lead to testicular cancer later? He, the thing is, they can have associated problem on the sender testes. Don't let us talk about testicular cancer here. We'll probably still talk about cancer later, seminoma. We're going to talk about cancer of the testes later on. Do you understand, doctor? We'll, we'll discuss about cancer of the testes, the non uh, seminomas, and the sem seminoma. We'll discuss about that later. Okay? All right. So just remember the complications here and talk about the treatment. Everybody should be able to mention the treatment. How do you want to treat it? How do you want to manage this scenario, doctor? You... Somebody is saying something. Eh? I said surgery. Yes, surgery. Surgery. Actually, you're absolutely correct. Treatment is surgical. It's surgery. Surgery. And don't forget, it's done before the age of awareness. And there are different types of surgery you do. Depending on the localization, you can do scrotoplasty, glandulinoplasty, uretoplasty, different, different, autoplasty, and also on and so forth. You just do surgical repair. It's mostly plastic. Do you understand? It's just a reconstructive uh, surgical repair. Do you understand, doctors? Please take note. If there's any question regarding, um, regarding epispandia and hypospandias, we are being focused. We are being really streamlining our thing. We don't want to go out of the scope. We have a lot of things to do. And today we are doing um, what's it called? Um, the urologies, because I think Dr. Esther prefer urine to the sheet. So that is why we are doing urology today. Okay. So, Doctor, any question regarding this? Any question regarding epispandia, hypospandias, and the rest? Any question? Hey, doctors, nobody is responding now. Okay, no questions. All right. Hello, Dr. Aisha, how are you? I'm fine. Good evening, uh, doctor. doctor. Dr. Aisha, what is this? Can we identify what is this? What is this? What is this slide display? Hmm, doctor? Is this the first time we are seeing a picture like this? I believe this is not the first time we are seeing a picture like this. Um, can correct or something. Like no, no, this. this is not, this is not, this is not, this is not, this is not lesion, sorry. Probably the picture looks blur or it's not glaring enough. This is not, this, this is not, um, I've discussed about, uh, ulcer lesion before where I talk about the cancroid before. This is not cancroid. I will discuss about that later. But this is refers to uh, as balanitis. You understand? This balanitis. Mm -hmm. Please take note. It's just, uh, inflammations of the glands. You can see all these things are just redness here. So there's inflammations of the glands. Let me show us inflammations of the, of the glands of the penis. You can see it's inflamed. There's inflammation all around of the penis glands. And please take notes. Let me write it. Let me type. Let me type because of that. So this is... Balanitis. Oh, some people will say balanoprostitis. So this is more like inflammation, inflammation of the glands, glands penis of this take note. And the main causes of this is mostly poor hygiene, mostly poor hygiene or people who doesn't circumcise, people who didn't do circumcision. So they might be predisposed to having something like this. So the main thing is poor hygiene and Maybe let's say um, lack of circumcision. You know, some region they don't they don't do circumcision in some area. Yeah, so when they don't circumcise, the person might be at risk of 
having something like this. Please take note. You understand, doctors? And another very interesting one that my that my looks are like, but it's a bit different. I think I don't have a picture of that here. I don't think so. I don't think I have a picture of that here. Is um, peronian disease. Peronian disease is just like when there is um, fibromatose of the of the penis of the penile region. So what happens is the patients will actually have what is called a painful erection. So when the patient have erection, the erection will be painful. That is refers to as, let me just type it somewhere here, because you might, and you might probably come across something like this in exam. So this is more like uh, penile fibromatosis. Please take note. So the patient will have painful erection. And please don't mix this up with uh, priapism. Some of us can mix it up with priapism. Priapism is different in the sense that it's painful sustained erection. That person is having an erection, but the erection is sustained, it's painful. You understand? And you know what is associated with all this. So that one is not, priapism is not fibromatous. Uh, there's, there's no fibrosis. There's no scar tissues in case of priapism. But in case of um, peronia disease, there's uh, scar tissues, there's um, fibrosis. So the patient will always have severe pain on erection. So for priapism, the patient will have uh, a sustained erection. The patient will have painful sustained erection. Erection that is sustained, that is painful. And mostly you know the association. In case of priapism, priapism is mostly associated with sickle cell disease in our environment. When you see MCQ question to be regarding to probably sickle cell disease, probably trauma or something, or drugs. Please take notes. Yeah, somebody say, I want to say APIS. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll talk about APIS. The previous picture I show you is obviously is APIS. It's APIS, Dr. Esther. You're absolutely correct. The previous picture I showed is APIS. So let me go to that picture, previous picture. Please, do you do we understand uh, balanitis and perineal disease and we can differentiate it from uh, Preapism. Any question regarding that? Please let's take note, okay? We know preapism. It's one of these uh, stigmata of um, what's it called? Uh, sickle cell. We've discussed about sickle cell disease very well, multiple times here. So I think sickle cell is not a problem for any doctor here. Do you understand? So the next picture, doctors. Yes, this next picture is condylomata acuminatum. You're absolutely correct. It's condylomata acuminatum. You are correct, Dr. Esther. Very, very correct. So this is also a very high yield, um, a very high yield thing ahead of the exam. You need to remember it very well. You need to actually know it very well. Because we've discussed, it, it's almost the same thing the way we discuss for female. We've discussed for female. And for female, we've discussed like it's just like, uh, what was it called? Genital what? You see what? Do you understand? You see what, what like growth, growing from the genital, from the genital region. Same thing with male. You just see similar thing. You remember the mode of transmission. See? So that when there is genital contact, ana, or maybe aura. So all this, it can be transmitted through all these means. And also we discuss about the serotypes. And the major one that you need to pay your attention to, the HPV, is the six and, uh, six and 11, right? Yeah, six and 11. The one that can be a, uh, predisposed to malignant cancer. Please take note. So we've discussed it's the same thing for male, the same thing for female. And we should remember, the thing we need to remember for this is probably the, the um, what is it called? The management, management. Let's talk about the management. Management is similar. So what do you want to do? Basically, doctors, you want to do a section. You want to cut, you want to remove it. Before a section, there's other management, there's other way you can treat it. People use this podophilin cream podophilin cream or podophilin gel or gel please take note people use this cream and people use the milky nod we've discussed about this does the same way as if you are treating your this thing uh what's it called genital what that for me it's the same same techniques you can do let's say laser laser ablation just to excise and remove it. You can do simple excision, simple uh, 
simple excision simple excision on the local anesthesia please take notes and so on you can do cauterization also yes you are absolutely correct Dr. Asha, you can do cauterization so you can do what is called electrode cauterization or cauterization Cauterization. so you can do this also so these are ways in which you are going to manage it please take note and don't forget people use the vaccine your gather seal salvarex people use it to to prevent it that is under levels of prevention if you get a question like this i believe you understand doctors i believe no questions okay so all right let's continue to the next slide let's move to the next slide so the next thing is let's see the next picture yes doctor this is actually this all these pictures some of them came out in mdcn before let's take note this is a previous mdcn slide and we should be able to identify what is this doctor somebody said hydrocell yes absolutely correct this hydrocell so this is more of like a pathology of the testes so there are some basic pathology we'll be discussing on testes we we'll discuss about not so much we are not wasting much of our time uh, Dr. Ishe said transilluminating hydrocele. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Uh, this is transillumination test is seen in hydrocele. Okay, so what am I saying? Uh, there's some basic pathology in testes that we're going to discuss very quick. One of it is hydrocele, spermatocele, varicoceles. Then we'll probably discuss about the epidemi uh, epidemitis. So there are also IE things you need to remember ahead of the exam. Doctors, I know most of us used to shy away from urology. I don't know why. People don't like urine for some weird reason, but thank God we have doctors that like urine. So please, I want us to just remember this few points. They are very important. This actually came out in MDCM before. And this is hydrocell. What is hydrocell? Hydrocell is when there is presence of fluid within the tunica vaginalis. And this is one of the major causes of scrotum enlargement. Please, this is hydrocell. Let me type it here. This hydro, hydrocell. Hydrocell. Hydrocell is fluid within, let's say, when there's plenty of fluid within the tunica vaginalis. And this is a very, one of the major things that causes enlargement. And doctors, this test you are seeing here is just to diagnose and see. You will really appreciate this test. I've done it before and I've seen it. The day I saw it, I was like, wow, I really appreciate it. What, how do you do this test? You just take a, let's say, this is the person's scrotum, right? Pardon my image, this is the person's scrotum, okay? You put a paper, you roll a paper, just a roll, rolling a paper like this on this side, okay? Please take note. And you put your torch on this other, on the opposite side, the torch on the opposite side, something like this. Okay? And you look from here. You can be two of you, maybe during when you are clerking and you are examining the patient, you might call for assistance. So when you flash it, a light towards the side and you look, you will see almost the same image. Same thing. Please take note. You will see same similar thing is what you are going to see. I've seen it before. The day I saw it, I was like, Wow, it was really very interesting, actually. Okay, let's take note of this. This is hydro. Dr. Tony, yes. Eh? When the picture you are showing us, is there a paper there that is also used? No, no, there's okay. no paper here. Probably this in the dark room. But when you are doing it practically, you do it with paper. Because if you if you are putting light in an open place, you won't see anything, obviously. It's just like where there's pure light already you know when you own a touch light you might not appreciate it until you this the until you look at the file looks like this then you you just put your paper maybe paper towards this side paper towards this side like this paper you roll a paper like this then you put your touch light like this on this opposite side and you look through this place then you make sure the place is enclosed you know this paper rolling this paper you are enclosing that place so you can appreciate if it's fluid inside. And doctors, this is actually best appreciated in a very young person. In an elderly person, 
that the scrotum is very thick and you might not really appreciate it. You understand? You might not really appreciate the, this test in an elderly person. You might not appreciate this test. You understand, doctor? So this is mostly appreciated in a young, uh, younger person. Take notes, okay? Any question regarding this? Any question regarding hydrocell? So don't forget, hydrocell is fluid within the tunica vaginalis. Please, okay? So the next interesting thing you also need to remember is, let me see if I have a picture there again. Let me see if I have other pictures. Yes, doctor, what is this? What is this picture? Can we identify, just spot diagnosis when you see picture very like that. Yes, Bone very cell. close cells. You can see Totos, uh, oh. what's it called, veins here. When you say very close cell, very close cell is just like the normal varices. The people are very, um, in very close vein, all these varices. So, like the normal varices people have in other parts of the body, but here, the, the, the vein that is dilated is within the spermatic cord. So you see it very obvious on the scrotum here, you can see. You see, I don't know if you can see around the scrotum. Please, everybody observe the scrotum region here. You can see a dilated tortoise vein, just like uh, varices. You understand? So this is refers to as varicose. So dilated vein within the spermatic cord is refers to as varicose. It's just like, just like the normal uh, distance. Please take note. This, all this whole thing can be associated with infertility. Both of them can be associated with infertility. So I think, let me type, let me type something. Um, so I said, wait to, our time is fast moving. I was talking about very, very cool celly. I said very cool celly is what is dilated vein within the spermatic cord. Spermatic cord. Please take note, okay? So, and it's always associated with inf infertility. Infertility, please, these are very important pictures. They are pictures you need to remember and they are pathology you need. They are very small. There's no, there's no much about it. But the thing is, we don't take it serious. Like we just feel like there's no much. We're actually, MD saying ask question regarding this. Just remember, you see dilated vein, okay? So another thing we'll talk about, let's move ahead um, to the next pictures. Let's see the next picture. Okay, wait, this is a different pictures. Um, this picture actually came out in MDCN exam. This picture, I don't know. This picture has been out in MDCN exam, so let's take note of it. We'll discuss about it as we move ahead. This is actually an undescended testis. So, but before we discuss about undescended testes, let's discuss about the spermatocell. So you need to be able to differentiate spermatocells from varicose cells. So you remember the epididymis, doctors. The epididymis. The epididymis is where sperms are stored temporarily. They are immediately for temporary storage of sperm, okay? So when there is dilation or when the efferent duct in the epididymis is dilated, that is containing the sperm, this is refers to as spermatocell, okay? And it's mostly associated with things like trauma. I think, do I need to write this? Our time is fast moving. Do I need to write it, doctor? Let me, let me just write. So can, can you repeat the sperm again? Okay, hold on. Let me just write it here. It said spermatocell. I say it's dilated, uh, dilated efferent ducts in the epididymis epididymis containing containing uh, the sperm or containing sperm okay so this is refers to as spermatocell and most is associated with trauma please take note our time will be moving on i will probably share link or probably we'll join with the same link i don't know Let's try and join with the same link. This time will be going off any moment soon. All right? So we'll continue with the other parts, with the epididymitis and the rest part of the uh, urology. Okay?